Hi everyone, uh, today I wanted to share one of my absolute favourite summer ferment recipes with you. Um, uh, this one is a fermented sweet corn relish. Um, sweet corn is fantastic uh, in the summer. Um, you can use um, fresh corn on the cob to make this or you can use frozen sweet corn. You need about three cups of sweet corn. The other ingredients that we have um, are all fantastic ingredients for health. We've got some coriander. Now, coriander is a love it or hate it kind of a herb, fantastic for clearing to uh, toxic metals out of the body. It's a really great detoxifier. If you don't like it, you can add flat leaf parsley instead. Um, but I love coriander, so that always goes in mine. Um, other ingredient I have is I've got some celery here. Now, you can use either celery or courgette. I normally put courgette in, but I don't have any today, so I'm going with celery. Uh, and you want about half a cup, so about half a courgette or two or three stalks of celery. Um, other ingredients we have is red pepper, we've got a red onion and um, I've got a lime which is going to make it lovely and zesty and some crushed chilli if you like a wee bit of heat, if you don't like heat you don't need to add it uh, and of course the most important thing is we need some salt because this is a ferment uh, and we're going to allow it to ferment um, for a few days. Now if you buy any like sweet corn relish in the shops it's usually loaded with sugar which is a wee bit bizarre to be honest because sweet corn's already sweet so we really shouldn't be adding extra sugar to it. Um, because this is a fermented um, relish it just gives it a lovely little kind of zing. It doesn't taste quite as sweet, it's slightly sour, slightly salty. It's a wee bit zingy because of the lime, a wee bit of heat because of the chilli. Um, and if, if you are making this and you think it's maybe a wee bit too sour, a bit too tangy, what you can do um, when you've fermented it you can add a tablespoon of uh, raw organic honey or a wee tablespoon of maple syrup and maybe if it's for kids, kids are sometimes don't really like to eat um, fermented things the same so you might need to add a wee bit of sweetness to it but in our opinion we just love it the way it is. Right, other thing you're going to need is a litre clip top jar um, and yeah, I think that's us. So what I have done this time rather than have you watch me chopping up all the veg, uh, I have pre-chopped them. So. Let me just recap what I have. I've got three cups of corn in the bowl. Uh, I have chopped up um, a red pepper. And again, you want to go for all the colours. So here we've got yellow. I've got a red pepper chopped up. I've got some celery. I've got a red onion. Uh, and onions are fantastic. Onions are like um, a great infection fighters. They're full of quercetin, which is a really powerful antioxidant. Uh, really incredibly good for all sorts. Uh, um, fighting all sorts of infections. Right, so I'm putting all of it in the bowl. Uh, so that's, and again, a really lovely selection of colours in there. Uh, I'm going to add about a teaspoon and a half of salt. So not loads of salt. And I'm using pink Himalayan salt. Um, so don't use table salt for ferments. Try and use a nice natural salt. So I'm going to add about a, table, a teaspoon, one and a half teaspoons. Uh, then what I'm going to do give it a wee bit of a massage. I have got some crushed chilli flakes here so I'll give it a bit of a massage to get some brine going first and then I'll put some chilli flakes in and a squeeze of lime and that's essentially it. If you are using frozen sweet corn you would you, you really want to sort of defrost it first because it's incredibly cold on your hands and it really doesn't take that long to get a wee bit of brine. So what you want to do with all of your veggies is chop them quite into quite small bits because this is a relish so you don't want great big lumps of veg. So cut them fairly fine. And as I said, the colours that you get, it's just the most beautiful colour. And this um, relish is great for sort of barbecues, it's wonderful with Mexican food. It's amazing on top like a baked um, sweet potato with an avocado dip and then top it with the sweet corn relish. Um, I haven't really come across anyone who doesn't like this and it doesn't take that long to ferment either. That's the benefit of a lot of the summer ferments. They're really much faster. So this one, for me, I usually ferment this one around about seven days. If you live somewhere warm, you could probably try it around about the five day mark. But for me, around about seven days um, is fine. So I'll just give it a little, you can see if you pick it up you start to get liquid coming out of it. What I'll do at this stage is I'm going to put in the juice of about half a lime 
and limes are fantastic and this what this does is it adds a really lovely citrus flavour and it brings the pH of the ferment down as well and kind of helps with the fermentation and coriander and lime is just a heavenly combination tastes absolutely oh wonderful right so I'm putting in the juice of about half a lime and then I'm going to sprinkle in some chilli flakes right I'm not great with chilli to be honest um, so if you like chilli feel free to add more um, but I'm a bit of a chilli wimp so yeah a little sprinkle is more than enough for me so yeah just giving it a bit more good squeeze it really doesn't take that long to get the brine coming out of it. Now the little mantra for fermenting veggies is under the brine and all is fine. Right, so make sure that you have massaged it enough and when you pick a handful up, you can see that there's actually brine dripping out of it. So what I have here, that's probably, that's enough. Got enough there. So what I'm going to do is start packing it into my one litre jar. A clip top jar is really handy for doing ferments because you can clip it shut and if there's any brine escaping it can get out through the rubber seal but no oxygen can get in um, and vegetable fermentations they are anaerobic so we don't want oxygen in them so I've got my jar what we do is just add a wee handful at a time and give it a wee squash because we want to try and cram it all in and get all the brine coming up to the surface it really is one of our favourite summer ferments. This is absolutely lovely. And it's so colourful too. And vibrant when you look at it. So this is about the right amount for a litre clip top jar. So don't use a great big jar and then have lots of it in air space above it. This is really just about the perfect amount. So I'm just going to keep... Right, when you squash it in, you can see that the brine is starting to come up and cover it. So I'll just put the rest in. You don't want to fill it right up to the top of the jar either. You want to leave a little bit of a gap. So I should just be able to get that all in. A little bit of a gap at the top. Right, that's fine. That's just a bit perfect amount. Right. And again, if you squash it down, I don't know if you can see it there, but there's plenty of brine coming up over the top. That's exactly what we want. And I've left a little gap at the top. Then what I'm going to do is, now in the summer, I actually have a, a grapevine, right? It's a Glasgow grapevine, so the grapes are, um, yeah, pretty rubbish, but the leaves are really handy for topping off your ferments um, because they have tannins in them, so they keep the yeah your veggies from going really soft nasturtium leaves if you grow nasturtiums big nasturtium leaves work really well too or you get leaves off a black currant bush they work too um or if you've got um a, a cabbage leaf you can cut a cabbage leaf to, and just put that in the top it's just to really hold things hold the vegetables down um so i'm going to put two of my nice bay leaves my, my vine leaves in what you can do then is i've got a little glass fermenting weight uh, that i can put on top um, other things you can use is these little glass goo pots. It depends on the size of your jar and if you've got space. Sometimes that's maybe just, yeah, no, that'll just fit in. So I've managed to fit that in. And then what you want to do is just clip that shut. Now you can see actually there's some brine coming out of that already. Oh, right. All right and that's our fermented sweet corn relish. So I'm going to leave that for about seven days. I'm going to put a bowl underneath it and leave it at room temperature for around seven days uh, and that should be absolutely delicious. Um, as I've said really, if you when you try it uh, and you think you would like a wee bit of sweetness in it, what you can do is just add um, a, a, a wee spoonful of raw organic honey preferably because then you're getting more benefits and a lovely flavour or you can add maple syrup. Other thing I was going to say, if you don't have any of the leaves that I mentioned, what you can do is use a little Ziploc bag and you can put that on top of your ferment and just put a wee weight in that. Um, or you can even just fill it up with um, some brine or some water and that will hold the ferment down as well. Other thing that works to top off your ferments is the bottom end of a butternut squash. 
if you just cut the button the bottom end off and trim it to exactly fit the top of your uh, jar that works perfectly that little lid and that'll hold everything down as well and um, so various options of how you can hold it all down but um, I really hope you give that a go because that will absolutely liven up all of your summer barbecues um, and really impress your friends and family and it is packed full of um, prebiotic fibre from all the vegetables. We've got coriander in there as well. We've got delicious lime. It tastes amazing and by the end of seven days we're going to have a whole load of probiotic bacteria in there as well. Um, so that is something to absolutely enjoy and there's literally no skill involved. You're just chopping up some veg, massaging them with some salt until you've got some brine and then packing them into a jar. Also what I meant to say is you don't need to sterilise jars when you're fermenting anything because these little lactobacillus bacteria, uh, they are so powerful. So just make sure that your jars are clean uh, and if you have washed them in soapy water, make sure you rinse them um, because we don't want soap residues which can be antibacterial and we're trying to harness all the um, powerful bacteria here. So if you are lucky enough to have your own garden and grow your own um, veggies then there are lots of lovely wonderful ferments that you can make to use them up um, so peppers and courgettes and onions and herbs all sorts of wonderful ingredients with major benefits for our health our little gut microbes love them um, and they just taste absolutely amazing so I hope you give that one a go